Last Sunday, uh, we talked about the transfiguration. What a strange event it was when Jesus took Peter and James and John and went up on the high mountain and was transformed in front of them. And uh, uh, I suggested that what that was was a glimpse into eternity, just for a moment, just for a moment. But the voice that was heard, that was the most important thing. And it said, this is my son. Listen to him. Listen to him. And those are the words that uh, we need to hear over and over again because he does speak to us. He speaks to us through the gospel. He speaks to us uh, as he opens our eyes and helps us to understand what's going on around us and what we need to do as his people to respond to those things that we see. And that's a very hard thing. We were talking about it in the Bible study this morning, how hard it is, because we see everything now. Or not everything, but many things are brought to our attention, and we really have a hard time knowing how to respond to them, what to do when we see people hurt and need, and uh, all kinds of, of things that are going on in our world. And that's okay. We need to know. We need to be aware. But today, and that, that was an elevated moment for the disciples when they got to see Jesus and uh, Moses and Elijah come together. That was an elevated moment, a moment in which we get a glimpse of eternity. But today, the lesson I read, that's a different lesson totally. Because they have come down from the mountain, and they're walking with Jesus, and today we get down to the nitty-gritty of what's going on in life. And uh, it's not always pretty, but it's what goes on. As they were walking, the disciples with Jesus, he started to talk to them and to tell them something after this moment of transfiguration. And he wanted them to listen. And I don't know if they heard very well. Because he was telling them he was going to be handed over by men. He was going to be put to death and then rise again. Now, if somebody said that to us, we would say, wow, I think I'll sit up and listen to this. This is important. Life and death issues. And that other part, rise again. These are things to be listened to. But the disciples didn't hear him. Or they said if they did, they didn't understand it because they had important things on their mind. And he called them on it. The important thing was, who is the greatest of these followers of Jesus? Now, that sounds strange. Who would say something like that? I thought. And then I thought, well, Maybe it's not so strange. Maybe we would like to ask that question. Maybe we would like to be seen as great. But that question, that was the thing that stood out to the disciples after Jesus had told him, told them that he was going to, to die and to rise again. Now, there doesn't seem to be an equivalence in those two things. The disciples weren't able to listen to him very well. 
And I guess I'd like to say I was above that, but I'm not. I have a hard time hearing too, just, just like they did, a hard time. After he said that to them though, about who is the greatest among us, he had a lesson to teach him. Once again, it's a moment. It's a teaching moment for Jesus. When he says to those disciples, listen to me. And this is what he had to say. If you want to be great, if you want that, then here's how you get there. You become a servant to all. Now, I doubt very seriously if that's what the disciples had in mind as they were talking about being great, but he just clarified the situation for them and he told them, if that's what you want to be great, then you become a servant for all. Now, we need to listen to that, too. And we say, well, we're not striving for greatness. And that may very well be the case. I don't think, I don't think many of us here are striving for that. But we do get mixed up in what is important. And we need to listen to that. We need to listen to Jesus why? Because God told us to listen to Jesus, and he said you need to be a servant. That's how you become great. We can think about all kinds of things, but being a servant is not always one of them. We like to be liked. We like to be popular. We like to be wealthy. There are so many things in this world that we want to be. And when we get up in the morning, we don't say to ourselves most of the time, what am I going to be a servant today? How am I going to do that? We wake up and say, well, at least I do. How am I going to make myself happy today? Well, it's not like that, is it? But that's, you know, I say that a lot of times. And that's great. We need to be happy. But the first thing is we need to ask, how are we going to serve? Maybe we can't touch all the things in the world, but we can touch each other as servants. We can touch our community as servants. We can touch our children, our grandchildren as servants. We can actually do this. But we have to get beyond the question of what is it that makes me happy and get to the question of what can I do to make others happy. We got to get to that point. Jesus called a, a child and took him up in his arms and he said, this is what it's all about. The child that he picked up, what does that child need? The child needs love. The child needs security. The child needs food. The child needs clothing. The child needs a home. And the child needs friends. Those are key issues to how we can become a servant. Not just to children, but to everyone around us because we all need those things. And we have to be sure that when we can provide those things to one another and to everybody in our community, when we get the opportunity, that we provide them. That's really important. 
It's important because that's what it means to listen to Jesus. He tells us what's important. Now, I know we all think we know what's important. And I'm sure we do a pretty good job of that. But we got to go beyond that as his followers. He calls his disciples to, to him and he teaches them in the teachable moment. And what he's saying is, uh, let's all get beyond ourselves and take a good look around, eyes wide open, knowing what people need, seeing what people need, and then be able to respond. That's being a servant in our family, in our congregation, in our community, and ultimately in the world. That's what, that's what we're called to do. Now, I was thinking as I was preparing to, to talk today um, about, like, in the church and in my education, uh, the servants that I have become acquainted with, like in my theological education, sure are pastors. I, I remember my pastors with great warmth, and uh, I just loved those guys. I really did. And they're the ones that get to do the proclamation to share the good news. And then I thought about my schooling, and I thought, there's a whole raft of servants that nobody even knows exist. And those are the biblical scholars. You'll never see them in the pulpit. You'll never see them on television. These people are known by nobody except those who bother to read their books. You know why they write those books? So that the pastor can know what he's talking about when he faces the congregation. And you'll never hear of them. And they spend their whole life doing that. They are our servants. They provide us with what we need. And they're totally in the background. But they do know what servanthood is. No notoriety, no publicity, no stardom, no anything like that. Just the bare bones work that it takes to translate things that happened 2,000 years ago into today. Servanthood is not going to get anybody any accolades. It's just going to provide something for us to give us the impetus to give it up in the morning and to face the world with a mission. And the mission, it does never change. We want to be respectable in the kingdom. We want our Lord to look at us and say, you know, you have been a good and faithful servant. That's what we want. But we must listen to him to be able to understand that. Keep our eyes and ears open. Face a broken world with joy, knowing that we're going to march right in there and try to do something about the brokenness. And if we all do that, if the church on earth does that, good things will happen. We can become a part of the miracle. And I say that over and over again because it's important. It's important to me. When I proclaim the good news, 
I want to be a part of that good news because I have been called to do so. And I want to know how to listen. And my prayer is, is that day by day I learn how to listen so that I have some kind of growth in my life. Sometime, some kind of a way to reach out and touch and make a difference in this brokenness. And the good news is, is that we can do that. The disciples, they had to be taught. They had to have that teachable moment. They had to be called to account for what they were thinking was important and to listen to what was really important. And we have to be called to account also for what we think is important. And when we do that, and we respond to that, then we become a part of the miracle. This world needs the proclamation of good news. That's what Jesus came out to do. He came out preaching right from the word go. Repent and believe in the good news of God. And that was the message that he carried everywhere he went, and he went a lot of places. He was proclaiming the good news of God. And we've been chosen to do that also. We've been chosen through our baptism to do that. And that's, I know what I want to do. I need to learn to listen a lot better than I do. I also know that. 